Somebody recently described my videos and my courses and my teaching as being holistic. Let me elaborate on that. If you don't know what I teach here, I teach the fundamentals. I teach about uh, the broader business considerations when it comes to development, uh, the job considerations. I teach you how to think like a very experienced developer rather than teaching you how to do something with MongoDB or Node.js, which is cool, or React, which is cool. And there's 10,000 tutorials out there on there. I want to teach you how to think like a highly experienced developer. So as I've said in other videos, when you think about that, you have to think beyond the code. Like even in the technology stack itself, we'll talk about the web stack. It's not enough that you know HTML and CSS and JavaScript. You have to understand the environment in which these languages operate, right? They don't operate in a vacuum, right? You know, these, those three languages in particular, they're typically being used in the web browser. So what does that mean? You have to understand the way the web browser processes the code, how it interacts with that code. You also have to understand the broader internet and uh, the web. You have to understand how uh, code uh, shoots around the web, um, how, uh, how to write the code in such a way that it is uh, aware, if you will, or it is respectful, if you will, of the structure of the internet, right? Uh, like I saw, for example, uh, last few years where there was this tendency to go heavy, heavy with JavaScript so people would be shooting down loads and loads of JavaScript into the browser and, uh, and that caused problems, that caused problems. On the other hand, you have to understand the, uh, the latency, the issue in terms of how the browser communicates with the uh, web servers which you have to contend with there, et cetera, et cetera. I can, I can go on and on and on and on and on and on. I know I'm being kind of high level here, but the point I'm trying to make, even within the context of just the coding, it's not just the coding. You have to understand everything around it. Like just a simple thing I cover in my basic HTML5 course is how the browser reads and processes the code. It starts at the top, it works its way down. This is important because you've got to understand when you may want to uh, where you might want to put your JavaScript, where you might put your CSS, and how these things uh, work. So, for example, if you are uh, putting in this, uh, Google tracking code just for your analytics, you probably want to put it at the bottom of the page so you don't, so because that is non crucial. It's something that the user doesn't really, doesn't see, will not see, and that could be loaded at the bottom. So, you want to get a quicker response. Now, it's, it's, it's quite slow. It's, it's quite fast, rather. It's not a huge issue, but I'm just saying, just as an example, just knowing where to position your code in the page, because you understand how the page is read from the top down, is uh, important. It helps you with debugging as well. I see a lot of bugs, um, like especially in dyna dynamic uh, languages like um, PHP, or uh, you know Ruby, uh, the way the code is processed also plays a role as well. A lot of bugs, like for example in PHP, a lot of errors has to do with people not understanding context, not understanding how the engine, the PHP engine, for example, as PHP as an example, how it processes code, and if you if you like doing making silly mistakes like declaring, not declaring a variable and trying to use it, right? You gotta declare, then you gotta use, that kind of thing. So, again, this is all contextual type of stuff, really, right? It's not so much coding. Now, it goes way beyond that as well. I could teach, one thing I teach is that you have to understand uh, business considerations when choosing technology stacks. I see a lot of nerds when they object to some of my assertions and some of my suggestions about technology choices, you can see they're looking at it purely from a technology point of view. And you have to look at the business that is using the tech or may use the tech. You have to understand their circumstance so you make that a proper choice. For example, if you have a company 
that's invested in a, a Ruby on Rails stack and you need to add a module, you can go there, go in there kicking and screaming that you want to use, uh, I don't know, mean or mern, the mean or the mern stack. doesn't matter. They already have their investment there and the chances of them wanting to introduce a new technology into their, uh, into their uh, investment, into their infrastructure, IT infrastructure, is very unlikely, right? Because they don't want to have to hire this type of guy and then that type of person and this type of person. They want to keep things you know, consistent. I dealt with that many years ago. I talked about that where when I was largely a de Java developer, I was brought in uh, to do an uh, update to a system that had been developed with PHP, and at that time, it was PHP 3, which was really bad PHP at that time. Very, that, that was the PHP that got a bad reputation, that old PHP. And uh, I didn't want to do it. And I wanted to do it in Java, and they wouldn't have it because they said, listen, we've invested in this. We don't want to have PHP in Java. And then we have to find Java people and PHP people. It's crazy. They said, we just want to deal with PHP for what, better or for worse. And, you know, they were right. They were right. You know, I looked at it and I said, yeah, they were right. Why have all kinds of things all over the place? Anyway, I, I went off on a tangent here. But that's the thing, right? As a developer, you have to understand what some of the broader questions are and the broader considerations. You can't just be myopic in your thinking and say, and say oh, this is the best stack. This is the best stack. Because you know what? The best stack doesn't exist. That's an illusion. The best stack depends on the circumstances at the time. Sometimes it's technical circumstances. Sometimes it's business circumstances. A lot of times it's a combination of circumstances. You know, and as you get more mature, you realize that, you know, the stack you use really, whatever, you know. Coding is coding. Coding is coding. It reminds me when I was in my, uh, my first business, I was in the pet products business and I was import rare fish that public aquariums would buy from me and zoos for exhibits and stuff and collectors and pet stores. And it was born out of a hobby, right? And we bring in rare fish from all over South America, from, from Africa, and then later on from Asia. It was a lot of fun at first, right? Because it was, it was my hobby. Was like, Ooh, you know. It's like if your hobby was, uh, I don't know, fancy cameras and you kept getting your hands on all kinds of new cool cameras, uh, then it's, it's fun, right? You're moving cameras. But what happens, so what happened to me with my uh, pet product and my fish business is that after a while, I don't know, the third or fourth year into it, I told people, you know, I got, you know, I had a warehouse, a warehouse full of uh, live fish and uh, products and stuff. That when it was a hobby, when it was a hobby, this stuff was very fun for me. But when you get into the business of it, uh, I used to tell people, you know, I got this warehouse full of fish and junk, but at the end, it could be toilet paper. It could be rolls of toilet paper. It could be uh, bars of soap. They became widgets. They became just anonymous things that I would move. All I cared about was moving units, moving units, right? I'm in business. When you become a more advanced developer, a more advanced coder, that's how you're going to start thinking. You're going to start thinking at a, more, at a higher level where you realize that uh, the language and the framework, it's, it doesn't matter really. Yes, you'll have some preferences based on your emotions at that time or your disposition at that time. You know, some people prefer doing this, some people prefer, prefer doing that. But at the end of the day, if you can rise above that and just become a developer who uses any language, you look at the languages as tools, you look at the frameworks as tools, whether you're using Mern or Mean or Python Django or not Ruby or C Sharp Don, it doesn't matter. All that matters is that you use the right tool for the right job at the right time, and that's about it. Yeah, so that's touching on, touching on what it is to be a more holistic developer, somebody who's more mature in their understanding and appreciation of things. I hope that makes sense. Bye-bye.